थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग ऑस्ट्रेलिया एजुकेशन ग्रुप एजुकेशन एंड माइग्रेशन न्यूज़ चैनल इंजीनियरिंग इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी ई आई टी इज़ द ओनली प्रोवाइडर हु हैज़ कैंपस इन मेलबर्न एंड पर्थ ऑफरिंग वेरी कंप्रीहेंसिव कोर्सेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग फॉर ओवर टेन ईयर्स ई आई टी हैज़ बीन प्रोवाइडिंग अ वाइड वराइटी ऑफ कोर्सेज फ्राम डिप्लोमा टू बैचलर एंड फ्राम बैचलर्स टू मास्टर्स टूडे मिस्टर रोफ बॉम इंटरनेशनल रिक्रूटमेंट मैनेजर विल बी विद अस फ्राम ई आई टी मेलबर्न टू टेल अस मोर अबाउट ई आई टी इस कोर्सेज एंड इस वैल्यूज रोफ थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग फर्स्ट टाइम इन आर स्टूडियो to hear to you and your team thank you for inviting us it's a pleasure thank you that's great uh rof uh, what's the situation in melbourne and the victorian government have given the new restrictions in place again we as eit had hoped to have our students back on campus with us for second semester but because the lockdown's been extended to the 20th of july um we had to go back into teaching the online mode to our current on campus students yeah we'll continue that until we hear the government changes its direction again but again we adhere to the, what the government saying because of the safety of the students yeah. we fully understand that yeah and are students still allowed to attend uh, classes on campus from our point of view if there was a need yes but we're very lucky that all of our students have gone into the online mode we do know that there's other providers out there especially in the english and the vocational area where because a lot of students have bad internet at home or they might live with a whole lot of other students it makes it impossible to study from a home point of view they've been allowed to go back into the campus and study there and how do you see the future of international students particular in victoria in melbourne um we're all hoping we get through the july intake all of us now know that july is not going to happen from an international point of view yep. there is still a lot of students that are on shore looking to change but they are they are under regulations about what they can do with their um their studies at the moment i do see at some point the industry coming back I think we all have to just play a wait and see game at the moment because by the end of the year hopefully we will see some of the borders open again and we're all keeping our fingers crossed that February intake March intake next year will allow students to come back into Australia but we've just got to take it month by month at the moment. So what is the actual pilot program is? Our understanding is and I don't think anything's been published just yet but what we're understanding in the industry there is certain Canberra based universities um uh, in conjunction with the government that are going to trial an aircraft coming in from I think it's China as an example where students already have a visa or they had a visa here but they went home who want to come back so they will bring them back into the country they'll put them in a hub for 14 days and then let them go back into their courses that will be hopefully if that is true with what is happening that will be the beginning of a program where we can look at countries like Vietnam the yeah. Philippines to start with where the subcontinent I think will be quite a, f- a way off at the moment yep. because of their current numbers with the covid issues but if we can start small we build a process around it and it works then we can start opening it up and hopefully back to one of your original points early next year we can look at the subcontinent again as a as a great opportunity for us to bring students back in again how many series and offer letter you have already issued to international students um we've had quite a few students for our july intake that we've had to defer through to february because a lot of them just again from their home country whether it be pakistan whether it be the philippines the borders are shut so either can't get into the country again within australia some of the borders are shut and it means quarantining um and i think a lot of the parents are just comfortable if they keep son and daughters close for the moment until the pandemic works its way through to a point where we understand it's manageable or we find an antidote and they're saying that, that could be the end of the year early next year at some at its earliest point. Mm-hmm. I think then and only then will be the will the world be comfortable that parents can start looking at sending their students overseas again. How many campuses EIT uh have in particular in Melbourne? Okay, in Melbourne we've just got the one and it's a great question because we've just moved into a larger campus down in Collins Street. We're very lucky. We've just it may be the timing's not so good, but we've started four of our masters program here from the July intake. So we have the Melbourne campus with four masters, but we've also got our head office over in Perth that has both four masters and four bachelor programs. So in Australia we've got the two campuses. And how many courses are you are just offering in Melbourne right now? In Melbourne we have the four masters programs. We're very unique because we offer it in the technical side of engineering. So we have mechanical, electrical, civil and structural 
and industrial automation, which is the Megatronics robotics side of the business. So we're offering four masters from this July. In your opinion, what is the special advantages to international students studying particular EIT courses? Um, for us especially, having Melbourne campus, a lot of our Pakistani students love Melbourne. There's a lot of communities here that already provide a support network for new arrivals. Um, we've already got some established Pakistan students within our group that are in their second and third semesters. Um, and again, because we've got such a close, small group, um, the students enjoy that type of delivery model. So, and Melbourne is the second largest city in Australia. So it offers the students a great opportunity with part-time work. Um, you can either live in the city where it's gonna cost you a lot more in accommodation, but less in travel, or you live out 50 kilometers where I do from the city, where the accommodation is a lot cheaper, but you've got to travel further in. So there's a whole lot of different dynamics that students can look at when they come and study in Melbourne. If I can also just quickly talk about Perth, Perth is now regional. So we're seeing some advantages of students looking at Perth as a regional city by doing their studies over in Perth and then looking at the post-study work visa for three years over there. But again, we have to remember, Perth only has a smaller population. Yep. Bigger, bigger you know, um, spread, but a smaller population. So there's two different areas to offer. And again, we're seeing some Pakistani students now looking at Perth as an opportunity. Yeah. Is there any special advantages uh, for the student to take classes online? Um, that's a very interesting question because a lot of the students pay for an on-campus face-to-face delivery. The EIT model has a, what they call a blended learning model. We actually use face-to-face -face lecturers, but we also use experts in their field from around the world that get beamed in in real time to teach our students. So prior to COVID coming in, our students were already had a taste of a bit of the online learning, for want of a better word, because of our blended model. We always make sure we've got an academic in the room when we're teaching in the online mode. Um, to answer your question, a lot of the students are not used to online, but realistically it will be a way of the future. So I think a lot of the providers now have to look at adapting with both on campus and online. Online will fit a lot of the programs that are fairly easily to be delivered. A program like engineering, engineering sorry, you can still deliver online, yeah. but there is still practical components and we make, you know, we make um, services available to get our practicals done during the student study period. But yeah, online is yeah, a big in, uh, increase in the future. Yeah. And my understanding is about EIT, that EIT have got a massive operation offering online courses. Correct, it's, it's one of our three um, divisions that we have. So the online code model has been operating for 15 years. It's got texture approval, and we've got a whole range of professional certificates, vocational programs, and a bigger range of higher education programs in the online model than we do in the on-campus model. And again, the online model demographic is a little bit different to our what you and I do normally in looking for the students for the bachelors or the masters. However, as the world is evolving with COVID and we know that online is becoming more popular, it may be an opportunity to blend the two, the online and the on-campus moving forward. Yeah. And are you going to make any changes um, in fee structure? Um, our online model has a very separate fee structure, which works out to be about one third of what the on-campus model is. Yep. Um, we've already got a very good price point for the on-campus model, but our online model is about a third of that. Because again, there's no, there are very few infrastructure costs. Yep. So you can't, you can't charge a full on-campus fee for an online model, and we don't do that. Okay. Does EIT have got any plan uh, to make any new campus in Australia in the future? Hopefully we will. What we want to do is get our Melbourne campus settled down. So we've just moved into new premises. We've put in three new programs to make it four in Melbourne. I'm sure at some point in the future when COVID's over and done with and we've resettled ourselves in both Perth and Melbourne, we will look at expanding interstate, probably on the East Coast as well, where the opportunities are. But at this stage, we just want to make sure Perth is operating correctly, which it is at the moment, and also get the new Melbourne campus better down over the next six to 12 months. Okay, Rolf, what are you gonna do with the scholarship? Well, at the moment, we have a large range of scholarships for our on-campus students. Um, if you go to our website, we've got a whole lot of what we call future scholarships, and they're academically driven. So we're looking for students that have good academics, and we started a 35% off scholarship and as long as you keep your grades up for the life of the course, the scholarship will follow with you all the way through your bachelor or your master's program. That's just one of our scholarships. They range from 35% off right down to 10% off. 
the IT is also very big in supporting women in engineering. Oh, yeah. And I was just saying to you the other day, we were lucky enough to talk to one of the, the top secondary colleges in Lahore the other day yep. that's all female yep. because we're really trying to promote women in engineering Absolutely. and there's not enough going in there. Mm -hmm. May I also add, we've just also introduced internship scholarships. Part of a student's studies is not only just theoretical, but they've got to get into the practical side and learn a little bit what, about what the practical side of engineering is. So as part of our course, you have to do 12 weeks of an internship. So we've put in four scholarships in Melbourne and four in Perth for internships as, that students can apply for. Mm -hmm. And if they're not lucky enough to get one of the internship scholarships, we've got a very attractive price point that they can pay for an internship of 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Finally, for the new Melbourne campus, we've got an offer of 10% reduction for the next one year. That's two semesters for students who may want to join the Melbourne campus. Mm -hmm. And the Perth campus has got a $1,000 bursary on offer at the moment for the July intake. Mm. Okay. And uh, the percentage of scholarship you just have told, is it for all onshore and offshore students? That's a really good question. Thank you for asking because not only do we have what we call future scholarships and they're for new students coming in, yeah. but if a student misses out when they apply for the course and they start and they start presenting really good academics, we also have the same set of scholarships internally for current students. Mm -hmm. So we're rewarding students that are going through each semester and get really good results with the opportunity to apply for in, you know, internal scholarships as well. Okay, Rof, how about your internship program? How does it work? We have partnered with a company called Outlife.com. Yeah, yeah. um, they're a fantastic internship company. At the moment, with our internship scholarships, yeah. if a student's lucky enough to get one of those, we then hand them over to our team at Outcome.life. They will then look after the students in going through the process of talking to them, reviewing it with them about their CV and everything before they place them into a company. Um, if a student needs to pay for their internship, this is where we've got a very attractive offer through the same company, mm -hmm. Jared and his team who are very dynamic in the world of internships. They're very well respected, they've been around for a long time doing it, and we've, we very much appreciate the partnership we've got with them. Mm -hmm. The internship, we hope, the way the student is set up with doing it, hopefully, if they make an impression, will lead them on to getting full-time work once their course is finished. So the whole idea of an internship in what, we, in what is taught to the student is make an impression and show the particular company you're working for, they should hire you once you finish your course. That internship you're just talking about, mm -hmm. is that paid or unpaid? Um, that's up to the companies that we place the students with. I would have to say in the majority of cases, a lot of them are unpaid. However, we're always encouraging these particular companies through our partner company that if the student can get some payment for it, even though it might be small, um, we would encourage that. But again, it's totally up to the company. And again, I think we try and advise the student because they work 20 hours a week, technically in an internship. So it still leaves them time to be able to do their part-time work on the side. I would hopefully you know, suggest that we could get some money for them, but it's totally up to the company that they're placed with. And again, we, we have to say to the student, look at it as an education program. Yep. For your, you know, do as much work as you can, get as much practical experience as you can, because that will put you in very good stead once you graduate yep. and to put something on your resume. Thank you very much for your special time and spend a lot of time with us. Thank you very much and I really appreciate it. To hear to you and your team, it's been a pleasure and I've totally enjoyed it, so thank you. Yep. The engineering courses offered by EITR, Masters of Engineering, Masters of Engineering Industrial Automation, electrical systems, civil structural, and the Bachelor of Science, mechanical engineering, industrial automation, electrical engineering, and civil structural engineering. If you want to get admission in any of these courses for Melbourne and Perth campus, please contact to Australia Education Group, Melbourne or Perth office numbers. Please like, subscribe, and share our channel by clicking on bell icon so that you would be keep getting notifications for our each new video coming every week.